Hey, I'm Taylor Craig. I'm Ryan Keelan. I'm Alex Suisa. Welcome to another episode of Pucking Panthers Podcast. We don't give a puck. Went to the last preseason game against the Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, and it was just. It, I gotta say, the first period, I got pumped. And the second. In the second we period, the we pressure, were the pressure was just. It, it, it just reached its peak. Derek McKenzie had a nice goal. He really uh, did. He did. Uh, Ryan wasn't there. He just heard that Derek McKenzie put the puck in. I looked at the stats. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. Well, you didn't see what what I mean, the hustling of Brickley and how did. Oh, no. All I care about. All I care about are the stats. Okay. I just like winning these games in preseason. It's all about the heart they show. And no. Brickley and Howden, like you, like you said, they showed great heart and hustle. <laughs> yeah. But I'm Good telling you, okay, okay. Jo- you joke about them having heart, but I'm telling you, when they were being pushed up on the boards, like they did not stop pumping their legs. I don't know if they're gonna have that same motivation when the season starts every well, night. They better, they're they're out. Cut. So the uh, preseason game it started out with a lot of pressure from the Panthers. In my opinion, it was 53 minutes of complete pressure. And then when seven minutes hit with third in the third period, I don't know what happened, but they just completely yeah. like gave up. Or they probably just were thinking, hey, we're up two nothing. Let's just not get injured. Let's just flow through the rest of this I, game. It's preseason, who cares? Let's just go. Let's uh, just get out of here. I think I jinxed them because it was right when I started thinking about chanting Druin is a bust <laughs> is when Druin skated in and went top shelf on the Wongo. He did well. Well, he, he wouldn't have scored if Ekblad didn't completely fall backwards. I mean, I don't know what happened. Ekblad just completely lost his leg. Now, that could be but due he... to the sophomore slump that we're already seeing. <laughs> so, I'm just wondering. I mean, if, if that's all you saw, I disagree. Was... Their first power play unit was Yager, Huberto, Barkov, then you had Bugstad, and then you had Ekblad, which I, that's just, they I think really, that looks they awesome. were really good. Yeah, they were really yeah. good. And then, and then the second one was um, Jokinen, Trocek, Piri. And Riley Wolkov Smith. Wolkov and Riley Smith, I yeah. think. I, so both power plays, Gallant was actually going with four forwards. Yeah, power play, constant pressure. Penalty kill was just, I mean, kept him to the outside. Very few penalty shots penalty. got through. How did, and of course, Derek McKenzie was great on the power play. I think, I think the penalty kill units we saw was Derek McKenzie, Howden, uh, with... Bolin was on one. Yeah, Bolin was the other one. In. <sighs> yeah, that sounds right. I thought the lines looked great up until the last six minutes of the game. I, I think these are the lines you're gonna see with probably the exception of Brickley being in there. What would your lines be on opening night? I liked what I saw at the preseason game. I think Brickley should be on the opening night roster. Mm-hmm. And with Grimaldi being scratched, I would like to see Thornton up in the press box and Kraus taking over Howden's spot and having Brickley still out there. I'm one of the people who's on the Brickley bandwagon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you want, all right, well, my lines would be obviously the top two lines. I actually originally wanted UC Yoken in on the top on the on the second line. Now I saw Riley Smith play. I like the way he played. I like his style. He hustles hard. He puts the puck on net. So I like him as a second liner. So you got Huberto, Barkov, Yager to start. Um, then you got Riley Smith. Then you Bukestad with Peary. And then I'd say third line you have. Bolin, Trocek, and UC Jokinen. Fourth line, give me Derek McKenzie in the middle of to start opening night because Rocco's injured. Would be Kraus and Howden. And so when Kraus base, when Kraus is when Kraus's nine games are done, I, I want Rocco back in there. I don't think Kraus is, is I think Kraus is gonna get sent back. Okay, so you're saying basically the same thing that I said, but you're just switching Brickley and and Howden. Yeah, yeah, and I have I would have Brickley um I would have probably Brickley on the back burner. And actually Havlat would be my backup forward. I would have Brickley in the minors. They just for the sake of playing time, yeah. you know? Have that can can sit for days and get out there and he well, probably He still needs play. to get signed. He still needs to get signed. Yeah. He hasn't even... And they didn't even play him in the preseason. I know. They so there's a chance he doesn't he doesn't get signed. You got 12 players. You're going to have two backup forwards and one backup defenseman. Backup defenseman's probably going to be Camford. Petrovic looked great. Petrovic looked really he good. He looked really good yeah. out there in preseason. Yeah. He did. Just like how he impressed me last year, mm-hmm. towards the end of last year. So who would be those two extra forwards that you would keep in those in those lines? Just Thornton and Grimaldi until he comes back. Well, Grimaldi's going to be placed on injured reserve, I think. So that's not even going to be a spot. Mm-hmm. That means you have one more spot left. Now, do you send Thornton to the minors? That's the option I see, and that's the option Thornton won't like. It's... Or do you put somebody like Kraus? I mean, or, or Brickley in that position with Havlat. I mean, where do you put all these guys? 
That's why I would say not. Don't even bother signing Havlin. I like the line with Grimaldi and Derek McKenzie, with Howden, because that's they're fast and Howden. And we size. saw in a preseason game that when McKenzie was with Howden and Brickley, and Howden and Brickley are just crazy yeah. fast and crazy hitting, and, and yeah. they were moving so fast. That is an energy everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, they were everywhere, and all McKenzie has to do is just stand in front of the net. He's going to end up like 30 goals. <laughs> what, we were talking, <laughs> what we were talking yeah, about was that like yeah, McKenzie was just dying to just finally get to play with fast guys, because <laughs> he's like, he's constantly busting his butt out there, and he's just, he's and he's being like he's being like a uh, cursed with Kopeski yeah. and Thornton, <laughs> who are like the slowest players in the league. He's like, come on, guys, fast guys, you can't even keep up now. With I, know. I know, I know. I I happen to really like McKenzie. I think we have a great chance of having a great start this season. Mm-hmm. Our first five games is at home Philadelphia, away Philadelphia, back to back, back to back. Next game is. Do you think Carolina. we play Carolina? Do you think we play Montoya? Second yeah, obviously, game? we're gonna see Montoya yeah. probably in Carolina. Then we're playing Sabres um, at back. home, and then we're playing um, the Stars. That's yeah. the first five games. I'd be comfortable with saying four, four and one. I think being a little bit more realistic, maybe three, one and one. I would say three, one. You know, at least like three of those games are going to go to overtime, probably. <laughs> Oh, uh, look at me, the Debbie Downer. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'd say I'll just, Shocker. I'll just try, most realistic is two, two and one, but I can see three, one and one. Yeah, I only see one, I think three, I think so. three, one and one is. I'll say two, two, one. That's what I honestly okay. think. Fox Sports Florida did a Panthers preview, and all the interviews I saw, and they did, they got so many good interviews. All the players were saying we expect playoffs. Now I'd like to hear their expectations a little higher than playoffs, but I think they were. They are like last year though. What? They were saying that last but year. La- but they, they were comparing it to last year. They were like, you know, at the beginning of the year, we really didn't believe in ourselves. And in the middle of the year, is that that's when we kind of got our swagger. And that's when we kind of like found our identity. I could see at least playoffs for this team, maybe more. Well, we appreciate everyone who's been watching the Pucking Panthers podcast, watching our interviews, our highlights, our low lights, <laughs> our low lights. Once, <laughs> once the season starts, it's just going to keep getting better. Uh-huh. We're going to keep it going. We're going to be pumping out the videos yeah. as fast as possible with game recaps and everything. But we have season seats together. Uh, so if at any time throughout the year you want to come up and talk to us, we'll be walking around the arena. Unless it's in the, the middle of the period, don't talk yeah, to me. <laughs> While the Panthers are losing, do not talk to Alex. <laughs> That's the number one rule. Do not. <laughs> yeah, he has, he has a thousand yard Tunnel stare. Vision. Do not. <laughs> Panthers lose, do not approach him, he gets violent. My favorite Alex moment last year. <laughs> <laughs> was when we were losing by th- at least three goals, and well, we some were. guy spilled his beer on Alex, <laughs> and he was already. It was the first game of the season. It was, was the it first really? game of the season. No way. I, was yeah, it, it was really? against Devils when we lost five to one. It was, it was the first game. game. The guy got up because I took. The, I think they took out Luongo and they put him on Twitter. And the guy was so pumped, and Luongo <laughs> was my favorite player. And I was so mad that Luongo was getting pulled because it was not <laughs> his fault. Dropped. And the guy jumped up when they and when the beer was coming out. The beer went all, all over me, and he was like, "Sorry, sorry, sorry." I just got up. He and went I, to the upper deck. I just so walked out to the upper deck by myself. <laughs> and I was just sitting I there like, like, "Where did he go?" I left, <laughs> it, I left Ryan. I just sat by myself for the rest of the game. I was so mad. So if that happens, please feel free to sit next to us. Besides moments like that, come and talk to us. Uh, Well, anyway, from the Pucking Panthers podcast, I'm Taylor. I'm Ryan. I'm Alex. And we'll see you again.